my most expensive and rarest games ever. Hey, it's Derek. I'm Derek talking to you. I've been collecting video games now for a couple of decades. You know, I think you can tell a lot about somebody by looking at their game collection. Um, for example, you can look at my game collection and see that I'm very cheap. I've got a handful of very rare games, but I only bought them uh, on a budget because, you know, I'm a game collector. Really, second, I'm a bargain hunter first. Listen, if I wanted to sit here and show you all, like, my greatest games and stuff, I could, but it's not to just be like, hey, look how rich I am, because I'm not. Big bottles up in here. Ball of time, choo choo rocket. <laughs> but it's more just like, hey, there are ways you can go about getting uh, rare games and expensive games if you know how to look for them, if you uh, like the thrill of the hunt. And uh, that's kind of what I've been about for, uh, whew, man, I guess like the 20 or so years I've been really seriously game collecting. Also, I'm not super into like uh, completionist collecting. I just want to always collect the games that like I find interesting. I'm also not super interested in how much my collection uh, is actually worth. So I uh, was going through my collection thinking about my most expensive games and I actually had to ask Twitter like, hey, where do you guys go to uh, price your games? And so I went, Grace, where do we go again? Uh, price charting. I went to price charting. So according to pricecharting.com, uh, these are my most expensive games. Oh, for the record, expensive games, rare games, don't always mean the best games. Uh, and we'll cover that here. Okay, first up, Spider-Man and the Web of Fire for the Sega 32X. This is a gem of a game that I, all right, okay. I don't actually have a 32X. I've never actually played this game. I played it on emulation and it seems fine. I don't know what the 32X is all about some cool like lighting effects and stuff in there. Also, the title screen shows Mega, uh, shows Mega Man, Spider-Man swinging away from a burning building. It's called Web of Fire. Did he light that building on fire? That's why he's swinging away from it. Who will prevail, the net or the web? Who is the net? I don't know, but I own it because it is a stupid rare game and I found it for crazy cheap. You wanna try and go to places like pawn shops or thrift stores or comic book shops, places that sell video games, but kind of price them all like the same. I found this at a comic book shop. They didn't know what they had. They just saw 32 bucks and went, oh, all right, 10 bucks. Um, and this is complete. I've got, uh, got the instruction book in here. I got the receipt, I had to say the receipt. Um, basically what happened was, you know, I was at a mall, a comic book shop, nothing but like high school kids working the weekend, do a minimum wage. Um, I felt like when I bought this, that I took that kid's paycheck because you know, you're at a mall, you're working a couple hours a week, minimum wage, you're not making much. We've all been there. Yeah, I took his paycheck. I felt really, really bad about it. I never saw myself ever actually owning a game like this because this is one of those games where it's like eight copies were made. Uh, came out 2000, sorry, 1995. It was 1996. 96? Oh, this is 95 on the back. Oh. Producer Grace is telling me 96. The back says 95. So maybe Wikipedia is wrong. Well, who cares? It came out after the PlayStation and uh, the Saturn. So it eked out right at the end. I think there's like eight copies, you know, that were made. It's, that's like a once in a blue moon kind of thing. You don't get it every single time, but you gotta be okay with that. That's how you find these crazy deals. The deals are out there. If you wanna get this stuff, yeah, pull out your credit card. Otherwise, like be cool with just seeing what comes in the net. And sometimes you get crazy stuff like Spider-Man for 32X. Number four, I was surprised this was number four and not number one. Panzer Dragoon Saga. What can you say about this game? It's considered probably the best Saturn game and one of the greatest games ever made. And there is a ridiculous story around this. This was meant to be like the Final Fantasy VII killer for the Saturn. It was made internally uh, by a team inside Sega that was dissolved immediately after it was finished. Um, it was an extremely hard, uh, entire sum development. Uh, the director claims that two people died working on this game. It is very different from the other Panzer Dragoon games. It is not a linear based uh, railgun game, though it is still, you still operate and move around the world um, on the dragon like that. And also Saturn emulation um, is a problem. This game doesn't emulate very well and the well, source it's, code. It's more that uh, it's hard for anyone to do a commercial re-release of it mm. because just pure emulating on a commercial scale for Saturn games. Yeah. Is yeah, but it's like it's weird to you hear about like Saturn emulation and stuff. But then Panzer Dragoon Orta had a you know working copy of Panzer Dragoon One. Some of those those bigger bigger questions about game preservation are I'm actually don't know the full scope of it. And also the source code for this is apparently lost. Really tragic thing all around. And I kind of feel like almost like survivor's remorse because I haven't played this all the way through. I've only played it a bit like for videos and stuff like that. So I feel awful like having this copy and like not ever really playing it. Cause I think 20,000 copies, Grace? Yeah, 
Yeah. Only 20,000 copies of this were made. Here is a alternative for people that collect games. Like that is a stupid expensive game. It was bought when it was a uh, uh, brand new. However, you can save yourself several hundred dollars and get the import version. I actually bought this in Japan in 2003. I still have the sticker on there for uh, 1,480 yen. So about 15 bucks. If you really want to play this game, um, you really want to have a physical copy, I recommend you get the import version. A lot of stuff that came out on the Saturn, like another game that's real super rare is uh, uh, Magical Knight Rare Earth. Getting the import version is so much cheaper because that game wasn't rare in Japan. So that is my advice to you. 15 bucks, you, you won't quite get that <laughs> on eBay now, but you're not gonna have to, uh, uh, you know, take out a bank loan. <laughs> number three is number five, Mega Man 5. This, and I'm holding it like this to let you know, is a factory sealed Mega Man 5 complete uh, still with, I got the little tag thing here. As far as I'm concerned, like Mega Man 5 is not my favorite Mega Man by a pretty wide, by a pretty wide margin. Um, here's how I feel. I think Mega Man's one, two, and three. Those are the best of the six NES games. And I think then like five is probably the better, the best one of the last three. But listen, kind of like, you know, everyone's got their own, here's, here's the thing about Mega Man. There are only legit, like maybe five to 10 good Mega Man games. And what those five to ten are are different for everybody. <laughs> Mega Man Five is where they finally got the look of Mega Man down. I love Mega Man's one, two, and three, but the box arts for all of them is garbage. <laughs> Mega Man Four was getting there, but I feel like Mega Man Five is just finally they got it right. But everyone's got their different opinions. But we all love Mega Man, so it's fine. Is is soccer in your top five? <laughs> where where does soccer place in that's, your top five? That's like that's top zero because it's above one. <laughs> so why I have this game? Um, well, back in the summer of like 2005, I think, and uh, maybe earlier, but DVD was coming out, man. VHS was done, and shouts to the old Video City in Anchorage, Alaska. They had their big summer liquidation, like, we're getting rid of all of our VHS tapes to make room for DVDs, and getting rid of everything. Also, we're getting rid of all of our old games. That's how I actually got a lot of, like, some, uh, a handful of N64 games that I own that have a bunch of gunk and stickers on them because I got them from an old rental shop. Anyway, I lived near this place and all summer they were doing this big blowout and I remember I missed the first day. I really wanted to go like get up early, go to there and get crazy VHS tapes and I missed it. And I was like, oh, well, I should still go one of these days. I drove past this place all summer, like for months. It was like, it must've been July or August by the time I was like, I need to go to Video City and finally see if they have any games there. And I swear to you, I swear to you, I go there and at the end of, and, and on end cap, they have like literally like 20 games. It's like sports game, sports game, sports game, Fetish Loop, Mega Man 5, sports game, sports game. What? Just sitting here for months, for months, Anchorage, Alaska was sitting on a box copy factory sealed Mega Man 5 just sitting there I couldn't believe it it I it should it shouldn't have happened and I walked up to the uh, uh the checkout some girls like on her phone or something like that or doing a crossword couldn't care less and she just was like hey how much is this she goes huh oh a game five dollars and I just like almost just like my knees gave way like it's been it's been moved around a little bit but uh it's still in like fantastic condition and I guess if I ever needed some emergency bail money I could, I could sell it. I remember when I got this copy, I had a loose copy of Mega Man 5, and a friend of mine, uh, he did not have Mega Man 5, and he wanted to get the whole collection. So I ended up selling my copy of Mega Man 5 to him, I think for like 10 bucks, just as a joke, so I could like make money on the whole thing. So uh, if I ever want to play Mega Man 5, I have to play like on PS2 or emulation or something like that, but it's okay. That's not the only sealed Mega Man game that I have, actually. Um, I have a Mega Man 9. This is a the press kit. It is factory sealed. I went to PAX and I got Takuya Aizu of Inti Creates, uh, who was the producer of Mega Man 9, to sign this. And even he was like, whoa, I've never seen one of these that's been still still sealed. This actually was a uh, extremely generous donation uh, from a fan. Uh, and that's why I've kept it in this little box here. Uh, to keep it as pristine as possible, it was it was it was extremely nice. Um, I actually looked on eBay, and these are not as rare and expensive for Mega Man 9 and Mega Man 10. Both got these press kits. They're not quite as rare and expensive as I thought they were going to be. I do believe that you know this is maybe a little more, but to me, I feel like this is maybe worth more to me personally. This is this is like a top five Mega Man for me. Okay, can you, can they see it, Grace? It's, it's factory. The cost it's, of factory sealed is it does not photograph. It's, it's, yeah, we got these lights up here. This is, this is S tier Mega Man. This game is still like fantastic, except that wily battle at the end is 
too hard. Too hard, that Wily battle at the end. Other than that, though, bah! Can you believe it? Those are not my most expensive and rare games. Jesus. Number two, my most expensive and rare game is... Always on the set. Earthbound. You really want to spend a ton of money on a game to own a physical. This is a game that is worth it. Uh, I don't know if I can say anything more than I haven't already said. This is one of the greatest games ever made. For me, it's just wild that like in my lifetime, in like, I guess my career as a YouTuber, I've seen this game go from a game that felt like me and eight other people liked and it feeling like it was the most underrated game ever to being like the most overrated everyone. Everyone knows Earthbound now. I said once in a video, the words criminally underrated do not begin to uh, describe this game. And like, that is not true anymore. That's really all I have to say about the game. I guess I should explain like, how did I get the damn thing? Well, I got into collecting uh, basically in like middle of high school, uh, cause that was when you could go into a thrift store and you were just tripping over NES games. NES games and Super Nintendo games and Genesis games, like they just couldn't get rid of them fast enough. Like uh, for a while there was a Kmart in Anchorage, Alaska that had NES games. You could go to a GameStop or a Babbage's at the time and get NES games. It was not difficult to get them. Uh, and so that's kind of how I got into collecting is it was actually for a time it was cheap. For Earthbound though, uh, I went to uh, the good old Microplay microplay video games on Benson. I actually ended up working there. Oh, and that's part of the story. I'm getting ahead of myself. After seeing the Phantom Menace, we went to the microplay afterwards, me and my dad, and they had Final Fantasy II, which is the game I actually grew up playing, but we never actually owned it ourselves. I saw they had a copy of it. I was like, oh, 50 bucks, that's a lot. I'll, you know, mow some lawns or rake some leaves or something like that, get my allowance up, and then I'll, I'll come back and I'll buy Final Fantasy II. And I did, came back a week later, and I was like, I'll have that copy of Earthbound. Shh, oh God. And they had Earthbound there too. They didn't have it last week, but they had it the next week or the next month or however long it was. Oh my god, I'll buy Final Fantasy 2, but can you hold that Earthbound? And then I, I don't know, I shovel some driveways. I don't know what I did. I got some money and then I bought Earthbound and I had just a single case, just a solo loose case, but it worked. 50 bucks, I had it. And then uh, fast forward to um, a couple years later uh, when I'm working at that very microplay video games and um, they have in the back on a, a stack of old strategy guides, they have it there. And so with my employee discount, I bought this for, I think like 10, $20. Um, here's the crazy thing. So I bought this for 10, 20 bucks, maybe less. Uh, I have another strategy guide for this that actually ended up selling for a couple of bucks because I didn't need it. I went to a thrift store one time and they had video game guides all in the magazine section and magazines were all like 75 cents a piece or something like that. And I remember just, Picking out so many strategy guides, and among them was a Earthbound strategy guide. I was like, how much are these? And the woman was like, huh? Oh yeah, it's 75 cents a piece. So it's like, I don't know, seven bucks. <laughs> so I got that and then I sold it um, for way more than that. I just want to give a shout out to, uh, I saved the address, but really I saved the name. I want to shout out to, uh, I'll say Jeremy H donated the box to me. He liked the video that I made. Um, and then some years later, uh, donated this box to me. And um, to, to show my appreciation, I kept uh, the address. I don't want to show, I don't want to put them on blast, but like, so it took me about, I guess, 10 to 13 or so years to get a complete Earthbound. Here's the thing about Earthbound. It's actually not a rare game. They actually made several hundred thousands of these. They just didn't sell very well. They made, there's pictures out there of Earthbounds in just bins for like a nickel. Buy them by the scoop, just get them out of here. But it's actually not a rare game, it's just highly sought after. Be wary of stuff like that. Earthbound's an extreme example, but I would say a less extreme example of like, I've been to game conventions and seen Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo, and people are asking like 80 bucks for it. Super Mario World is, I believe, factually by a wide margin, the most common Super Nintendo game. It's not rare, it's highly sought after. However, hold out for a better deal. Or for example like this, like, I mean, it's on Virtual Console, you can emulate it, you know, like, we're never gonna get Mother 3, the best way to play that game is with the fan translation and stuff like that, you know, so, uh, it really depends on, if you, if you want to spend a ton of money, though, there are a lot of games you can put several hundred dollars, near a thousand dollars into, make it a good one, and I think Earthbound is absolutely one of the greatest games ever made. This game stinks. Jeremy, what did you do? And last on this list, just to give you an idea of like, I don't pay that close attention to prices of things. I have a couple of Sega CD games that I thought for sure, I have one in particular that I shot, thought for sure was my most uh, rare and expensive one. I thought Snatcher 
It's gonna be the most rare and expensive game that I own. I thought for sure all the working designs and stuff would be the rarest, but nope. It was this little doozy, KO Flying Squadron. How the hell did I get a hold of this game? Well, when a console generation's also winding down, game shops gotta get rid of their inventory. They want to get rid of old stuff. They don't care. That's how I got a lot of Dreamcast games. And that's how I got most of my Sega CD collection. I bought all my Sega CD stuff, I think, in like 95 or 96 um, because it was super cheap. Uh, I think I got this at the Microplay. Maybe 20 bucks. Maybe I don't think anything more than that. I knew that it was kind of a rare game and it was an interesting one because it had anime on it. I remember thinking that the anime cutscenes was like one of the first games I ever saw that like, like eh, here's Here's how it used to be, man. In the 90s, anime was a weird, different, new thing. You'd go to video shops, you would see stickers on My Neighbor Totoro that said, this is an okay film for children. I used to have to have my dad rent Bubblegum Crisis for me. Like, it wasn't that bad. It was it was barely R-rated. Bubblegum Crisis, faces of death. You know, you had to have your parents, you had to have ID. I remember playing this game and actually showing it to my friends being like, look, it's it's like cartoons and they're talking and she calls her dragon Spot and Spot falls asleep and she's like, get up, Spot. Are you still sleeping? Wake up! Yeah. It was so brand new and crazy. So I remember really liking it at the time, um, but I don't recall much more other than being kind of like a Proteus style shooter. It's goofy, it's irreverent and silly, but I don't recall it being like great. <laughs> you know, like Snatcher is a freaking masterpiece an absolutely amazing game um i don't know if it, i don't know if i'd call this one amazing but uh it is apparently man the rarest game that i own i have a complete it's not in the super greatest of shape so maybe it maybe by some measure it is not actually uh the most expensive game that i own this appointment stuff becomes old but not retro right it's just old junk no one cares about yet and i would say that like, even right now hey if you want to go like in 2019, game spots, game stops, still have Wii and Wii U and 3DS games. If you want to scoop up Wii, Wii U and 3DS and lots of PS3 and lots of 360 games, they're there and they're cheap. So you missed out on the Sega CD, that sucks. But hey, you can still get some crazy Wii U games. See if you can't get yourself a copy of Funky Barn for uh, for a nickel. So that'll do it for this one. I guess if you wanted to see more videos like this, this is something kind of new for the channel. Don't worry, like if we do more of these videos, the normal stuff is not ever going to stop. This right here, this is not even nearly my entire collection. I got some stuff in a closet over there. I got a ton of crap in storage too that still has not made it uh, down here to Seattle. Friends, hey, I got so much crap. <laughs> I got so much crap. Oh, factory sealed. Greg Hastings tournament paintball max. I got some dumb stuff too, if you know what I'm saying. Uncle Derek, hold you down. Also, I keep, I keep KO Flying Squadron and Greg Hastings next to me at all times. Who you know got the body harvest strategy guide? Uncle Derek got it. How the hell did I get the Half-Life Dreamcast strategy guide? I don't know, but I did. Oh, but Derek, he ain't dumb. He ain't got two copies, different Onimushas. He ain't an idiot who somehow got Two Resident Evil 3 strategy guys, he's a dummy. Can't get get out of here. Get or come back and hang out because your friend Derek is stupid. We are a Patreon supported channel. This video was not supported by our patrons because it's something kind of different that we do. So we didn't feel proper charging the patrons. This is free for everybody. We also have some t-shirts, t-shirts and pins. Um, at the time of this video right now, they are still currently 50% off. So check that out, link is below. And I think it's gonna do it for now. Everyone stay powerful and we'll see you next time.